What's cracking, guys? Bruce Matson, your host of the show of Metro Scout Fantasy Football. And today, we're going to be doing a rookie mock draft. One of many we're going to be doing on the channel. We're going to be doing this until draft day, after draft day. And this is just overall analysis, giving you a good guideline on these rookies. So when it comes time for you to select these guys for your rookie drafts, you're ready. And we're going to be mocking like crazy on this channel. That's why you need to hit that subscribe button. We got rookie draft content, dynasty fantasy football content almost all day, every day on this channel. That's why you need to hit that subscribe button. But we're going to do a 1QB rookie mock draft. I've done some on the DLF channel, so check those out as well. But on my channel, I'm going to be dropping mock drafts often too. So you better be on the lookout. So let's get this cracking with the first pick, 101. In this draft, I'm going to be drafting Traylon Burks, wide receiver from Arkansas, 6'3", 225 pounds. Had a 41.15% market share of Arkansas's passing production. He had a huge game against Alabama where he really sealed the deal. Elite level after catch abilities due to his size, due to his speed, size adjusted athleticism for days. 3.57 yards per out run. And this dude averaged 9.3 yards after the catch per reception. Not 9.3 yards per reception, but 9.3 yards after the catch per reception. Traylon Burks, stud wide receiver, book it at the 102. I'm going to change things up, and these running backs, I like to go back and forth with them, and this time, my first running back, I think I'm going to go with Brees Hall, running back from Iowa State, six foot one, 220 pounds, he's a banger, he can run it between the tackles, ran for 3,941 yards during the course of his career, along with 50 touchdowns, 713 yards after contact this year. And 82 catches on his career. So he can also catch the ball out of the backfield. A good all-purpose back that should get enough draft capital. Really make him a guy that Dynasty Gamers are going to want to draft. At the 103, third pick off the board. I'm switching things up. I'm doing things a little different here. And I'm going back to the wide receiver well. Usually in my mocks. I tap in the running back pretty hard early, but I really want to switch things up to see how it looks like, plus deliver some different content. At the 103, I'm going with Garrett Wilson for Ohio State, and this guy's an enigma. Six foot, 188 pounds, decent size, 24.16% market share of Ohio State's passing production, which is decent for an Ohio State Buckeye, especially this year. Sharon Field, Chris Olave, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, two very, very good wide receivers. Averaged three yards per route ran, 417 yards after the catch on the season. This guy can really contest the catches. He can high point, good route runner, can do it all, really. He can do it all, get downfield, make those splash plays. Garrett Wilson, one of the top wide receivers in this year's draft. Going to the 104. Still keeping things fresh and different. I'm going back at the wide receiver well. And I feel like this guy is being touted pretty good. But I still feel like he's a little bit underrated. And I may bump him up big time in my rankings later in the offseason. Because I like him. I keep looking at him. I'm like, he needs to be valued more. He's being underrated. But this is a good wide receiver class. And I'm talking about Drake London. Wide receiver for USC, 6'5", 210 pounds. He kind of fits in that Mike Evans, Brandon Marshall, Vincent Jackson role. That big guy. He can body up DBs downfield, bring in those contested catches. Just get downfield and bring it home. He had a 30.28% market share of USC's passing production. That's with him missing some games due to an injury. Still had a huge ownership rate. 3.52 yards per out run. One of the best in college football. And he was one of the most productive wide receivers in college football throughout the season. He is a very talented wide receiver. Former basketball player. So he knows how to box out once he gets to the catch point. He knows how to climb the ladder. He has sticky hands. And he's always willing to make the play. 
Let's keep it moving, though, to the fifth pick in this draft at the 105 here. I'm going back to running back because we have to center leader. Running backs are very important. Running backs, even when it's just an okay class, running backs still hold a lot of positional value. So here, I'm going to be drafting Isaiah Spiller, running back from Texas A&M, 6'1", 215 pounds. If you go back to my rankings video from a few weeks ago, Adam has my number one back. I still do, but... Between the big three, Kenneth Walker, Spiller, and Brees Hall, I like all three of them. I flip-flop between them, and I hold them all in high regards in this draft. I call them the big three for a reason. So here in this draft, to keep things fresh, I'm taking him here at the 105. 1,016 yards and six touchdowns. He is coming in fresh, too, because he shared the backfield this year. Very good season, though. 3.63 yards after contact per attempt and forced 56 missed tackle. He was used more in the passing game this year. Caught 64 passes on his career. And the fact that he was used more in the passing game this season is very encouraging because that means he's been developing. He also looks a lot quicker, had a little bit more long speed, which is something I like to see in my running backs. I don't think he's the burstiest running back. I don't think he's a killer when it comes to size adjusted speed. But he has more than enough to get the job done. Done some film studies on him. Check those out in the archives. At the 106, you can probably guess this pick because you have to go with the top running backs. And I have one left, and it's Kenneth Walker from Michigan State. Had Heisman talks circling his name throughout the season. 1,634 yards, 18 touchdowns. 6.46 yards after contact per attempt not 6.46 yards per carry 6.46 yards after contact per attempt it's hard to say because it sounds so crazy forced 89 missed tackles led college football on that stat and he is probably one of the best running backs in college football when it comes to like the approach to line scrimmage reading the momentum of the defenders around him. And one thing I like what he does is how he used head movement, how he used jab steps to really bait linebackers, play cat and mouse with them so he can gain more separation before heading the hole, so he can trip them up a little bit, allow him to get more leverage when it comes to reaching that running lane. Let's move forward to the seventh pick. And with this pick at the 107 I'm taking my favorite wide receiver in his class. I don't value him or rank him as the top guy. He might be for some people. And he may end up there. These are, are some good wide receivers in this class. Like, from what I feel like in this class, I have the same strategy as previous years where I want to spray and pray on these wide receivers and get as many as possible and just chase them because I feel like... Just like previous years, we're going to have a lot of these wide receivers hit. But in this pick at the 107, I'm going to be drafting David Bell, 6'2", 205 pounds. And this guy has been nasty ever since he stepped foot at Purdue, balling out during his freshman season and all the way until now. 31.47% mark share, Purdue's passing production. When you see a market share in the 30s, you got to look at it. You have to take that prospect and really, really admire them because that's a high ownership rate. 2.7 yards per route run, 114.5 QB rating when targeted. This guy can do it all. Good route runner. He is very physical. He can body up DBs at the catch point. Sticky hands, strong. He can make those highlight real catches downfield. Don't just look at this year's tape. Look at last year and even his freshman season. I'm telling you, he's a baller. Moving on to the 108, and there's another wide receiver I like. And I like him as much as Bell, and a lot of people like him. There's a good chance he's going to be drafted in the first round, and there's a good chance his stock is going to increase immensely between now and draft day. And that's Jamison Williams, wide receiver, Alabama, 6'2", 189 pounds. Would not be surprised if he runs a 4'3". Had a 31.94% market share of Alabama's passing production. That is something you do not see from Alabama. Usually they have multiple stud wide receivers just stealing market share from each other. You had John Mechie there 
But John Mechie's John Mechie, and Jameson Williams is a lot better than him. Also averaged 3.7 yards per out run, 662 yards after the catch this season. I'm not concerned from just a one-year breakout, just one year of production. Had two years at Ohio State, nothing happened there. A lot of storylines have been built from that, like he couldn't compete with Jack Smith and Jigba, couldn't compete with Garrett Wilson, couldn't compete with Chris Olave. I did a whole video on this. It's in the archives. I'm not concerned about this because look at Ohio State this year. Does that look like a team that makes the best decisions? James Williams obviously made the best decision for himself. Transferring out, going to Alabama, proved himself. And now his draft stock is is climbed up there. I like him better than a lot of the wide receivers that came out of Alabama in recent years, mainly because of how explosive he is, how good he is after the catch. And one thing you don't hear much about, which you're going to hear more going forward into draft season, is he, he's a decent route runner. He's very cerebral. He's very nuanced. And we're going to see more of that when we grind more tape on Jameson Williams. Stick with this channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're going to have a lot of film studies on this dude. Rolling to the 109 pick. And honestly, this is one of my favorite running backs in all of college football. Not 100% sure yet if he's going to declare. Could potentially happen. Six foot one, 220 pounds. He's team thick. And I'm talking about Zach Charbonnet from UCLA, formerly from Michigan. This guy is a truck. He can move a little bit. He averaged 3.5 yards after contact per attempt. Took over UCLA's backfield this year. Also was productive during his freshman year at Michigan. Had double-digit touchdowns. He forced 69 missed tackles this year also. And rushed for 1,153 yards and 13 touchdowns. Look out for Zach Charbonnet. I look for him to be a big riser. If he goes to a juicy situation... His draft stock in rookie drafts is going to climb. You could see him up there with the big three. He may even bounce one out because he's that talented. And if he goes to a spot where everyone's pegging him to be a RB1 for that team sooner than later, you're talking about a big time get in rookie drafts. And honestly, if he's going around the 109 area in drafts, 105, 109, somewhere middle of the back half, I'm honestly wishing I'm back in that area of the draft so I can draft him if I need a running back. Outside of that, if I don't get him, there's wide receivers to pound. At 110, there is another wide receiver because this class is loaded at the wide receiver spot. This guy is very talented, but we don't have much tape on him from 2021. Probably should have guessed it by now, but I'm talking about George Pickens, wide receiver from Georgia. He did break out at age 18 during his freshman season. 23.29% market share of the passing production. And then in 2020, he didn't go ham um, statistically wise, but still owned a 20.53% market share of Georgia's passing production. Decent ownership rate, just barely hits the threshold for me. But from what I see out of him is a guy... That is smooth. That can catch the ball while contested. Can track it down. Very aggressive. And honestly, when everything's said and done, I would not be surprised if he becomes the best wide receiver out of this draft. He looks the part on the field. He had the ACL this year. Missed almost the entire season, but he's back. He's on the field. He looks prominent, he looks good, and it looks like he's getting ready to boost the stock for draft day. The upside is nuclear, and at this point in the draft, at the end of the first round, most of these picks, unfortunately, are not going to hit, so I might as well jump on that upside, and that upside's going to be with George Pickens. At the 111 spots, I'm going with another Buckeye wide receiver. You know who it is, Chris Olave. Six foot one, 189 pounds, and this guy is a smooth, 
technician, can make plays downfield, has good hands, only 21.37% market share, passing production. Stats kind of dropped this year, but we know Jackson Smith and Jigba is the truth, and he stole a lot of that production. But Alave, still good in his own right, still can be productive at the next level, probably should be because there's nothing this guy can't do. The only thing, the only knock can probably put on him is that he's not the biggest wide receiver, but I'm not even going to hold that against him because this guy is crisp. Average 4.2 yards after catch per, per reception, 2.29 yards per route run. Chris Olave is a good wide receiver. has been balling out throughout his tenure at Ohio State, which not many Buckeye wide receivers can say they have done. And Chris Olave has been considered one of the top wide receivers throughout almost his entire collegiate career. Last pick of the first round, at the 112, I'm going to be going with another running back. And his value is going to be very subjective to where he gets drafted and who he gets drafted by in the NFL draft. But I'm still going to go with him here right now so I can talk about him. It's Kyron Williams, running back from Notre Dame. 5'9", 198 pounds. The first thing you'll see on tape and the first thing you'll hear about his tape by people is that this dude can block his face off. That's going to get him on the field one way or another. And we're already hearing people talk him up about this in December, late November. And it stands out like a sore thumb, a glorious sore thumb, though. His blocking is just up there. This dude is physical. He has burst in the open field. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Got 42 balls for 359 yards. 3.71 yards after contact per attempt. He could be a gem that people are sleeping on, but he could also be a running back that falls in the draft. I feel like his blocking ability, his burst is going to get him noticed though. So I'm not really too worried about Kyron Williams. If not, I'm just very intrigued about this running back prospect. But this is the first round of this rookie mock draft. We're going to have more for you later. More rounds, more drafts, super flex, and everything else. Switching it up, switching the players so you can get more analysis. I'm going to have a lot of rookie draft content coming your way. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Tap that button right there. And I'll catch you next time.